I'm watching Iowa caucus coverage so that you don't have to. Why is there so much coverage? Because they're going first, which is very important, which we can talk about more later. But first, I think that we should talk about what a caucus is. They're kind of like voting gatherings. I keep wanting to call them voting parties, but I think that's got like a weird double entendre with political party. And also, I think it might insinuate that they're more fun than they really are. I mean, they're important. They're definitely important, but not all important things are fun. Even though this does officially kick off the primary season, it's not officially a primary. Some states do primaries, some states do caucuses. Both parties run their caucuses differently, and it is run by the party, not the state at this level. But we're just going to talk about how the GOP is running this caucus in Iowa tonight. There are a little more than 1,600 precinct locations across 99 counties in Iowa tonight, and you must be a registered Republican to participate. You show up at your caucus location, which means you braved freezing temperatures. It is so cold in Iowa right now. That's why you were hearing Donald Trump say that people would walk across glass to vote for him, because they kind of have to do that tonight. I mean, not glass, but... They have to freeze to come out and go to this caucus. So you're willing to freeze. You have a job that allows you the time to be here. You're a registered Republican and you show up at your caucus location. Then you check in, you elect caucus officials and you get to hear speeches from each candidate's camp. Then you're handed out secret ballots and you vote. And then those ballots are tabulated. There's 40 delegates available of the less than, but almost 2,500 overall GOP delegates available this season and they will be allocated based on the percentage of the vote that each candidate wins it took them and by them i mean most of the major news networks about half an hour post caucus start to project that donald trump was going to win which means he's going to get the majority of the votes which we already knew we knew that's what was going to happen what are they doing on fox news right now uh well first of all they played a clip of nikki haley talking about how she's more electable in the general as if they care they do not care the republican it doesn't matter she might be right she probably is right i'm terrified that she might be right about that but it does not matter to the people voting in these caucuses organizing the party deciding who the nominee is and then they've got kaylee mcenany on to essentially stump for trump under the guise of being a reporter or a pundit or whatever she's supposed to be uh, now. Also, uh, as is to be expected on Fox News, they're spending the entire night talking about the press and the media as if they were not a part of either one of those things. If you were wondering how Asa Hutchinson is doing, he is still on the ballot and he is still in like the official news network's counters, which I honestly kind of think is bullying at this point because he has 11 votes. That's how many votes he has. I mean, it's only 6% of the precincts reporting. So who knows? He might have like 66 votes or something by the end of the night. But can you imagine if you were running for president and you could like personally identify everyone who voted for you? You had a national campaign. You made it on the debate stage. And, and you know by name, probably, everyone who voted for you in the caucuses. It's bullying. They should take him off. The counters, they sh it's bullying. What are they talking about on Fox News? Okay, first of all, uh, a lot of their people, a lot of their talking heads are trying to hammer in the point that it's good that these votes have been counted quickly, that that's how elections should be run. That's how like valid votes are counted, which is just them laying some dangerous groundwork for the general, if you ask me. They're also feeling very congratulatory. They're like, our friend Donald is so modest and his campaign managers were trying to, you know, Temp down predictions, but we can toot his horn. He's doing so well. Uh, they're very, they're very excited. And Vivek Ramaswamy is officially going to end his campaign. I'm sure we'll see his endorsement coming out for Mr. Trump next. It'll really, it'll put him over the edge, I think. All right, let's talk about Trump's victory speech. Uh, he hit on the classics, the 2020 election that was stolen. Uh, drill, baby, drill. He He literally said that. Twice he said, make America great again. Several times he said, MAGA. He said, America first is MAGA, is make America great again in the longest ramble of all the rambles. Um, he talked about his family. He thanked Melania and then talked about her mother who died two days ago and was like, she's watching over us. She did so much for our family. I think kind of like maybe implying that she she won them this this caucus i don't know uh then he talked about his kids don jr and eric are his favorite uh ivanka and tiffany are watching from home and baron is tall he made fun of electric cars he told the people in the audience to go out and buy more land and bigger tractors which 
I, it felt like he was playing a spoof of himself at that point. He talked about the other candidates like they were first graders who'd managed to carry an uncovered glass of water to a table while only spilling some of it. It was like, congratulations on making it this far, you know? He brought up a fan who's apparently been at like a billion of his rallies who was wearing a like suit that was, it had, it had bricks all over it. He called it a beautiful suit because it symbolizes all the bricks in the part of the wall that Trump built or had built or commissioned. He said he'd won in Iowa three times, which is not true. He said because he was friends with Putin, like if he'd been in office, that war never would have happened. And he could just like get everybody in a room together because he's also friends with Zelensky and he understands everybody and he's just gonna end all the wars. In fact, if he was president, we wouldn't be involved in any wars and he's gonna like sort them all out. And then he pitched a bunch of civil works projects. Like I don't think he realizes that's what he was doing. He phrased it like when you're in New York City in the subway, you can still get whacked. He actually, he said the word whacked. Um, but he then talked a lot about cleaning up cities and infrastructure and, and, and public works projects. He also said he's going to lower taxes and pay down the national debt at the same time after he pitched his public works projects.